This is going to be the first of three podcasts that deal with the eye. In this first podcast, we'll just give a general overview. In the second podcast, we'll talk about the anterior portions of the eye. And in the third podcast, we'll talk about the lens and the retina. Now, your learning objectives, you should be able to relate histological organization of the eye to physiology of vision, and you should be able to identify different regions of the eye in histologic sections, either from glass slides or from electronic images. Now, we can start a discussion with the eye by pointing out that the eye is analogous to a camera. It has an optical system to focus light. In a camera, of course, the optical system is the series of lenses. The eye can automatically adjust to light levels. In the camera, you have a diaphragm with f-stops. The eye can detect light. In a digital camera, you have a charged coupling device with pixels, or you have film in a film camera. And of course, digital cameras have the ability to transmit the image to some type of memory and store the image. So the eye, the optical system of the eye to focus light, would be the structures of the cornea, the aqueous and vitreous humor, and the lens. The eye has the iris, which essentially is the diaphragm to control the level of light that gets through the pupil. The retina with photoreceptor cells functions as the light detector. And of course, the optic nerve transmits the images that the eye puts together to the brain where the information can be interpreted. And of course, the brain processes information from two distinct images because obviously we have two eyes. In addition, the eye has the ability to protect itself. It can maintain its tissues. It can repair tissues. It can clean itself. And of course, the eyes can track movement. The wall of the eye consists of three concentric layers. There's an outer layer, a middle layer, and an inner layer. The outer layer is sometimes called the choreoscleral coat. The middle layer, called the uvea, is essentially a vascular coat. And the inner layer is a photosensitive coat. So we're going to talk about each of these in detail as we go through these podcasts. The outer layer has the sclera and the cornea. The middle layer, the uvea, would be the choroid, ciliary body, and iris. And of course, the photosensitive layers, the pigment epithelium and the neural retina. And then there's a non-visual part of the retina. Now, in the cartoons that we're going to show through these podcasts, the outer layer is represented by the blue, the middle layer by the red or pink color, and the inner layer highlighted in yellow with the black around it, the black to represent the pigment epithelium. The cornea covers about one-sixth of the anterior portion of the eye. The surface is convex. It's transparent because there's connective tissue that's arrayed in regular layers. The cornea is, of course, continuous with the sclera. The cornea is the major refractive element in the eye, and it has a refractive index. I don't care that you remember this, but it has a refractive index of 1.376. The refractive index of air is considered 1, and the refractive index of water is considered 1.3. The cornea is divided into five strata that we'll show you later. There are three cellular strata and two non-cellular strata. The sclera is the posterior portion of the outer wall of the eye. It's a dense, fibrous connective tissue. The connective tissue is irregularly layered, so the sclera is not transparent like the cornea is. The sclera provides attachment sites for the extrinsic muscles of the eye, and the sclera gives the eye its white color, so the sclera is the white of the eye. It tends to be bluish in children because it's relatively thin, and it's more yellowish in the elderly because lipofuction pigments will accumulate in the stromal cells within the sclera. The uvea is the middle layer of the eye. We think of it mostly as the choroid. It's a vascular layer. There are melanin pigments in the choroid that absorb scattered and reflected light. We're going to talk in great detail later about the ciliary body. The ciliary body is a ring-like thickening that contains ciliary muscles, and these function in 
lens accommodation, and then the iris is the contractile diaphragm that controls the size of the pupil. And the pupil is essentially the opening in the iris. And then the inner layer of the eye is the retina. The neural retina consists of light sensitive receptors and many other cell types. So the retina is made up of a complex neural network. And then there's a retinal pigment epithelium. It's the outer layer of the retina. It's a simple cuboidal cell lining and these cells contain melanin. And of course the anterior portion of the retina is the non-visual portion of the retina and we'll talk about where that non-visual portion begins and the visual portion ends at a structure called the aura serrata. We'll talk about that in a few minutes. We can talk about chambers in the eye. The layers of the eye wall and the lens itself can serve as the boundaries for three chambers in the eye. So there's an anterior chamber shown on the diagram. It's a space between the cornea and the iris. So here would be the anterior chamber. The posterior chamber is the space between the posterior surface of the iris, like this, and the anterior surface of the lens. So the posterior chamber, shown like that. And then the vitreous chamber, uh, all of this area, would be the space between the posterior surface of the lens and the neural retina. So in this cutaway of the eyeball, you can see the three walls of the eye, so the sclera, the choroid, and the retina. The photosensitive retina, as we said, terminates anteriorly at the aura serrata, and that would be in approximately this region in the retina. The non-photosensitive portion of the retina is called the iridial retina, and it lines the inner aspects of the ciliary body and the posterior surface of the iris. And you'll see that as we go along in the podcast, and you'll see it nicely in our lab laboratory. I'm not going to review in these podcasts the blood supply to the eye. You should remember this from your anatomy, but you remember that the ophthalmic artery is going to divide into the central retinal artery, and that's going to branch and feed all aspects of the retina, and other branches of the ophthalmic artery are going to branch and feed the other regions of the eye. So we're not going to go over those here. I would encourage you to review that if you need to from your anatomy. The refractive meteor of the eyes alter the light path to allow the light to be focused on the retina. And so the refractive media of the eyes consists of the cornea, which is the clear anterior window, the aqueous humor, which is a watery fluid in the anterior and posterior chambers of the eye. The aqueous humor also provides nutrients to the cornea and the lens. Of course, the lens itself is a transparent, crystalline, biconcave structure. You'll come to appreciate that it's suspended from the ciliary body by radially oriented zonular fibers, the so-called zonula of zin fibers. And you know the lens can change shape for accommodation. We'll talk about that in a little bit. And then the vitreous body is a transparent gel in the vitreous chamber. It essentially acts like a shock absorber to protect the retina. And it helps to maintain the lens position and helps to keep the retina in contact contact with the retinal pigment epithelial cells. This is just a review of the development of the eye. As you know, tissues of the eye are derived from the neuroectoderm, from surface ectoderm, and from mesoderm. And what I'd like you to do is note the path of light in relation to the photosensitive portions of the rods and cones. So these would be the rods and cones. The photosensitive portions are at the very back of the eye, if you want. So the light has to come in and penetrate all through these layers in the retina to get to the photosensitive area. Is, and that reflects the embryology and development of the eye, which is shown here. And this is just to remind you, which you've already studied from your embryology, these diagrams would range from approximately four weeks on up to 15 weeks of development. Very early, you can see the overlying surface ectoderm is forming the lens. You see the lens placode forming, and that's going to invaginate to form the lens. And then there's an invagination of the optic vesicle, which is going to lead to a double-layered optic cup, shown here. The inner 
layer of the optic cup is going to become the neural retina and the outer layer of the optic cup is going to become the retinal pigment epithelium.